Welcome. On October 28th, we had an X flare. X flares are relatively rare on the sun. They are the largest class of flares that NOAA recognizes. They are 10,000 times brighter than the smallest class. The classes go A, B, C, M, and X. Each one is 10 times brighter than the previous class. So X is the largest class of flare that you can get. I found the development of this region rather strange. The region 2887 appeared over the east limb on the 22nd of October. It was already fairly well formed, but was not the return of an older region. If you look at the magnetic field down in the bottom right, you see it could be interpreted as two separate regions, one to the north of the other. Both have strong leading negative spots followed by large areas of positive flux. It was already formed with large spots and when it came over the limb and the magnetic structure is quite complicated. That's usually a signal for flaring. But surprisingly, it took at least six days of relatively quiet conditions before it produced the first of its significant flares. The region first appears over the east limb on the left here. And as it crosses the disk, you can see there are relatively few changes in the sunspots. There are some data gaps which make the video jump. Same for the magnetic movie. Again, not a great deal is changing, although there are some new magnetic fields appearing here, there and everywhere, and there are, is some motion. But there's nothing particularly different at the end of this movie from the beginning. When it did start to flare, we had what we call a, a flare build-up situation, where you have a smaller flare followed by a slightly larger flare, then a really big flare. That's quite a common occurrence. So we had an M1.4 flare that peaked at 740 UT on the 28th. It was followed just a few hours later by an M2.2 flare that peaked at 1028. And then the big flare, the X1 flare, peaked at 1535 UT. If there wasn't big changes at the surface of the sun, there certainly were very large changes in the solar atmosphere. We're going to start by looking at the Solar Dynamics Observatory AIA instrument, helium-2, at 304. That has a temperature of about 50,000 degrees Kelvin. It's the so-called transition region. This is where temperatures are transitioning from about 6,000 degrees in the photosphere up to a million degrees in the corona. So temperatures are rising very rapidly over relatively short distances. At the same time, densities are falling just as rapidly over those same distances because you need to maintain pressure balance between the regions. Note the eruption to the southeast, the bottom left during the X-flare. That comes towards the end of the movie. And after the X-flare, you see magnetic loops form at the site. Uh, this arcade of loops generally indicates that a coronal mass ejection has been launched. If we look up into the corona, we do that using the iron 12 line at 193 angstroms. We're looking at temperatures of about 1.2 million degrees Kelvin. Note the dark eruption shown here uh, from the event during the X flare. It goes off to the southeast, and that's important when we look at the coronal mass ejection itself. It appears dark because it was so dense that it would not let the emission from the disk go through it. It absorbed it all. Note the size of this with respect to the Earth. The Earth is dwarfed by this huge eruption. Now we're going to get into lines that are hotter and therefore characterize the active sun. We're going to look at the iron 16 line at 335 angstroms, which has a temperature of about 2.6 million degrees Kelvin, about twice as hot as the previous channel. And here we see the really strong hot loops 
that are created by solar activity and the flares become very much more apparent. Lastly, we're going to look at the flares themselves, and to do that, we're going to look at a hot line, the Iron 18 line at 94 angstroms. This line is formed at about 6.4 million degrees Kelvin, so about twice as hot as the active regions, and the flares become very, very apparent at these sorts of temperatures. <laughs> Unfortunately, we don't have a decent movie of the coronal mass ejections as yet. However, I got this still frame from Helio Viewer. This is the combination of the Soho Lasco C2 instrument, that's the red field of view, and the uh, Soho Lasco C3 instrument, that's the blue field of view. The inner one is a high resolution channel, the outer one is a large field of view channel. And did we get a CME? Yes, we did. In fact, we got two. There's one going off the northwest limb, that's to the upper right. That I do not think was associated with this event. That was something probably from behind the limb. The big area exploding away from the sun from about 10 o'clock round to about 3 o'clock is the CME associated with this X flare. And because it's such a large event, uh, and because the longitude is near where the Earth is connected to it magnetically, there's a fair chance we're going to get a geomagnetic storm out of this thing. While we didn't see very much change in the sunspots at the time of the flare, there is a, certainly an aftermath that is quite evident. The large flare occurred after this first image on the left. It's the so-called before image, and you can see there are a large number of large sunspots all over this area, either one or two regions. However, just a couple of days after, most of those sunspots have disappeared and the regions have simplified significantly. This often happens after a big flare. It basically disrupts the whole magnetic structure of the sunspot region, leaving a much more simple and lower energy field. October of 2021 has been the most productive month as regard to flares of the solar cycle so far. Some of you may recall that in my videos earlier in this year, I was forecasting a fairly large burst of activity sometime in the autumn, and I believe that this has validated that forecast. So what can we conclude from all of this? We have just had the second, eighth, and the thirteenth largest flares of solar cycle 25 in just a period of 10 hours. That indicates that activity is on the rise. They all came from the same region, 2887. However, a couple of days earlier, we had two more M flares from a different region. So the sun seems to be getting very lively. As I say, October is the most active month so far this cycle. Uh, and the activity rate of flares in solar cycle 25 seems to be accelerating. So that's it for today. Uh, stay safe, and until next time, goodbye.